Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death, because I live, you shall live also. Friends, siblings, loved ones, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our feet as we celebrate the life of our dear sister, aunt, cousin, colleague, and friend, Waylene Patricia Cooper. Waylene personified the word faithful, which was demonstrated from her birth to her death. She was faithful to her family, which included taking care of her nieces and nephews, especially my granddaughters, whom she faithfully looked out for while in school. Waylene faithfully communicated with me daily to keep me updated, faithful to her job, faithful to her ministry, which she, which she without fail, logged in weekly, but most of all, faithful to her God. And I believe if my sister can speak to us one more time, she would tell us, do not weep where I hope, for I am on the upward road, leading to that bright abode, where forever my soul shall be free. She is saying, that will be a happy time. Heaven's bells will speak the chime when the home gates swing open for me. Therefore, we come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God search our hearts that in pain we may find comfort in sorrow, hope, in death, resurrection. Berlin was a, the epitome of love, trust, and faithfulness. She always gave you a thousand or more percent of her time and resources. She was the proverbial Dorcas for all and sundry. We will forever keep you in our hearts. Sleep on, Berlin. Take your well-deserved rest. The hem as we move into the service and we just want to take this time out to thank God for all of our ministers, our pastors, thank God for Bishop and Minister Gaines all the way from Nassau, thank God for Pastor Kirk Jeffrey, thank God for Bishop um, Clifford Petty, and thank God for um, Minister um, um, Alvin and Bethel, amen. And thank God for Major and Salvation Army. And we also thank God for Pastor uh, Jason, uh, Brother Douglas, and all our ministers and friends and ministers today. Thank God for uh, Officer from the Minister of Education and also uh, from ME teachers, principal and teachers from the ME. Cooper Primary School. We just thank God for all of you this morning. Amen. Ask for you to come and to celebrate the life of William with us. Amen. And William would say this morning, said, I'll keep walking in his light till my fate shall end in sight. He will lead me till safe over the sea. I shall find a welcome there and a crown of glory where when the home gates 
the swing open for me. Also thank God for Pastor uh, Orlando, amen, for taking time out of this year to be with us this morning. God bless you this morning. Amen. The song, when the home gates open for me. transition, but the joy to know what's ahead. Psalmist Davis can say in Psalm 61, Hear my cry, O Lord, and listen to my prayer. 
but he can continue with the thought, when my heart is overwhelmed, yeah. Yeah. what am I supposed to do? Lead me to the rock yeah. Yeah. that is higher than I. Yeah. So even as we get ourselves to continue with these thoughts, we can come together now as we'll ask at this time for prayer opening by Brother Doug Thompson. Oh, sorry. The song, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, tell me to remain seated while all the congregation stand. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more.
praise. Lord God, we come into thy presence, dear Lord, with any heart. Lord, there are many who are sorrowing. Some morning. Two ears come out 
those things you see, that which is spoken. And they are important members of the body, but there's also some greater important members that's never seen. We don't talk about the heart, we can't see the heart, but we know how important it is to our life. We never talk about or see the blood, but we know it is indeed a vital function to every single member of our body. Williams' life was that type of testimony. Not for the show, not for the limelight, but again, being faithful and doing that to the very end. Amen. And the song's a testimony. I'm glad I turned the cross. When I started to seek the Lord, I'm glad I turned the cross. I fully measured to Jesus' word. I'm glad I turned the cross. As to you, have you turned the cross? What's really important in life, temporal life, here for a time. Time is only here for a certain period. But after that comes eternity. That which is done for Christ will last. Congregation, stand please. Come and remain seated. Saying, I'm glad I come in cause. <laughs>
You can actually come oh, to this I next portion. Oh, I know. Yes, we're going to have Asset Lukov by Reverend Ada Sands. It's off time we hear someone say Asset Lukov and they're distant, they're far away, they're going to go to the person. Amen. Yes, when we talk about someone, yes, when someone yes, is faithful, yes, 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 when we talk yes. about someone who lived there, Amen. who's been their neighbor, who's Amen. been there for a thick and thin, I knew her. Yes. I knew her. A beautiful rose once grew, where all could see, sheltered beside a garden wall. As the days and years and months went swiftly by, it spread its blooms and branches, straight and tall. One day, a beam of light shone through a small crack in that garden wall, that beautiful rose that had opened wide, bent its branches and passed through to the other side. Now you family, friends, and other relatives, you will not see that rose on this side again. You who deeply feel its loss, be comforted. Do not sorrow. On the other side of that garden wall, that rose is blooming even greater than before, sheltered by God. Growing up with us girls under the big silk cotton tree, many of you know that big silk cotton tree. Yes. Us girls was a set of girls that loved our families. We were there for each other. So much fun memories I cannot tell. We studied the Word of God together. We played ball together, although Raylene could not hit. She missed everyone. She got struck out for every time. There was, she was not a loud mouth person. Oh, there's so much I can say about Berlin. We called her boy. We didn't say Berlin, we called her boy. Yeah. Berlin was a pillar of strength to us, didn't say much. But she always was so inspiring, always cracking jokes and making us laugh. Every Monday night, we would gather together and we would do Bible quiz. Let me tell you all something. These girls I talk about know the word of God coming straight from the mouth of our dear uncle Brad Thompson. Amen. Amen. We knew the word yes, and we still got the word in our hearts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't only talk the word, but we live the word. Amen. As we have gathered here today to show our respect to her who knew her, I can truly say she will be greatly miss. Waylene is with Jesus now. Yes. She accepted Christ as her Savior. What about you? For those who want to see her again on that great getting up morning, make your calling an election sure. Don't get ready. Be ready. Be ready when your time comes and you will see her again. With no more tears will dim her eyes. When there's peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. We will understand it better by and by. May our soul rest in the eternal peace of God. May God bless you. Thank you, Reverend Nate. This next one, we can ask us promise being put together. See even how God was moving through it all. Who was more, who was Berlin, or who was boy? A silent person, a quiet person. And all the time you go to ask how well she's doing, yes, you're fine. But when you stop and ask her a second time, now how you really doing? Yeah. And that's when you get to know the depth, the soul, and the heart of persons. And she reminds me of one of those great old prayer warriors 
the sisters amongst the Israel, they don't say much, but boy, when they speak, it's powerful, it touches the heart, it comes for help. Yet in their silence ministry, how profound they are. So a few brief moments in silence. Let us then read in the deed then as in silence, let us read then the obituary, followed by the selection by the Thompson Brothers. Close up. 
I said, when it comes to times like these. Amen. Amen. And these times come pretty regular, yes. yeah. pretty often. Right. You need an itinerary to keep up with the funerals, home goings. You might as well say amen to that. Amen. So all of you gathered here this morning, we want to give thanks for the life of our dear sister, who have lived a life, quiet life. But I want to mention in particular those of us who knew her and those of us who knew the family from which she came. If there is a good Samaritan family anywhere in the Bahamas, the Culver family, Moivin, Pastor Lana, the Sherman, you ever had anybody die? You ever have anybody fall sick? Anybody needs? A grave dog. These Christian brothers are an exemplary family for our community and indeed the Christian world. I speak from experience. We look around us today and we notice what is going on. It is such a joy when you can come together to hear such great testimonies. Not made up stories, true stories. A cousin, Sister Eda. A cousin's here who sang a while ago. Without any music. Did you take a note of that? Yes. Yes. But they sang from their very souls, from their hearts. Yes. Amen. When I've gone the last mile of the way. Yes. When is my mile going to end? When is yours going to end? My yes. oh, dear sister. She made it right. And it, what a joy it is when you can see Christian families coming together. And you know, today we come here to share with one of the largest families in our communities, the Culmers, the Thompsons. You, you read the names of all those brothers and sisters and Uncle Joe and their Malia. Was that 14 or 15 children? <laughs> oh, I'll check it out. Bethel family, the Kalma family, all connected, cousins. And you know, I thank God for my Christian cousins. Mm -hmm. And those who are not Christian yet, mm -hmm. but it's time to know the Lord. Amen. Lord the Amen. Amen. These are serious times. Mm -hmm. yes. Maylene grew up a stone throw from the Bible through all. And one of the first tones she ever heard was a spiritual tone. Mm -hmm. On the other side was the Methodist church. The other side was the Salvation Army. On the other side was the Gospel Hall. Mm -hmm. She heard the Gospel and she accepted the Gospel. She was not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ. She surrendered her soul. And today we have a home going service. I say we have a home going service. Yeah. I'm saying something, you know. Amen. And we are living in serious times. She was the daughter of the late Roy and Addie Tullman. Roy was a section of the Bible through all for over 25 years. Addie was one of the most faithful Christian women in our community. Never missed a service. But he couldn't miss it. She had to go to Sunday school. She had to go to young people's meetings. You heard again, I say, the fellowship they had. They had to know the books of the Bible. They had to know John 3.16. They yes. said, well, I wonder where he coming from. I just want to tell you, my brothers and my sisters in Palmetto Point, if anybody in Palmetto Point don't go to heaven, they can't blame it on the church. Yes. Yes. So true. It was high time. The Lord is soon to come. He's coming every day. But you know, my cousin Roy, he had a nickname. One of his nicknames was, was Serious. You ever saw Roy put his arms together? And <laughs> One of his nicknames was Serious. And when Brother Sherman said to me, because we're coming up, I said, of course, I'm coming. We are living in serious times. Yes. People are dying every day, more 
peace to know the Lord. So today, I've come on behalf of my own family who's connected, well connected. When I see so many of my cousins who came in the wood, you know, that gives me joy in my heart. Because there's God, God's people are still around. They're still telling it like it is. And if there's ever time in the Bahamas, we need the Lord more today than we ever needed him before. For so those of you who remain faithful in the church, don't slack your right. If you're in music, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Be born again. How's on? Let the aroma be a spiritual aroma. Because apart from the Spirit of God in the church, it ain't no church. Amen. You ain't got to say amen. amen. I'm not the preacher. But I, I like when I get chances like these to, to pass on the word. Amen. Because in the end, it is only the word of God which will stand. Amen. As we heard already about David, David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Because these are serious times. Yes, sir. So to this great family, our family, my family, aren't you glad you went to Sunday school? Yes, sir. Aren't you glad you learned John 3.16? Yes, but in knowing those and learning them, let's accept them. Accept the man be born again. The joy today, Gwendolyn was born again. Yes, sir. She had the second weight from above. Time is running out. Theme and restoration this year is the journey continues. But the question comes, and you and I don't know when the journey is going to end. These are serious times. Merlin has made it right, and we have this opportunity to come to this sanctuary, this holy place, to celebrate our life in doing so. Time will come if the Lord that is is coming. That's my picture. That's your picture. You sang a while ago, the Lord is soon to come. Are you ready? Their sister was ready. 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 Prepared. Ready when the bridegroom comes. So to the family, you've done all you could. And this family is very dear to me. I didn't know, well, like I knew you. But Eula was my connection along with the brothers and the rest of them. And you, and you know that was a connection. Yes, I wouldn't go into the details, but you know, there's nothing like having family that you could be proud of. Yes, Not that you're ashamed of those who don't go right, but you'd like for them to be in the way of the Lord. Yes. Eileen, we're going to meet you. She was prepared. She was ready. Yes. Say ready to go. Yes. Ready to go. Yes. Say ready to meet the Lord. Yes. Don't worry about dying. You can die sooner or later. Yes. But I'm That's ready. Right. That's right. That's right. ready. Yes. Soul rest in peace. Yes. Family yes. continue to serve the Lord. Be faithful. Yes. Yes. The Lord is soon to come. Be yes. God bless you.
the Father, the Son, Ooh, and the Holy Ghost. We all ought to ask Jesus to keep us near the cross. I deem it an honor and a privilege to come to the entire ecclesia and to the ecclesiastical officials. I recognize each and every one of you. And also to the beloved bereaved family, Pastor Leonard Coleman and uh, Elder Stephanie Coleman, Elder Ina, Brother Mervyn, and to the other brother, I don't not remember, Brother Sherman, and to your wives and their spouses, to all of the nieces and their nephews. I have come today on the behalf of the Kalma and all of the extended family. Everybody had said what they wanted to say, but I know one thing. I know one thing that Sister Worthy and Kalma is resting yes. in the presence Yes. Of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So I come just to share my sympathy, yes. my compassion, yes. and my thanks giving to you, mm -hmm. the family, friends, ministers, and all who have gathered here today, who have spoke so eloquently on her behalf. Yes. But can I? submit this to you today. Yes. I saw the very last because Pastor Leonard and Landisha and Elder Stephanie Como, they were networking with me and my wife in Freeport. We were in Freeport on mission. And as I began to send them songs of encouragement because I know Sister Whirling was going through the valley yes, in yes. the shadows of death. Yes, and yes. this is what I am mostly concerned about as a trained minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, that when one is going through the valley yes. and the shadows of death, you have demons on one side yes. and you have the angelical host yes. waiting to receive her. Yes. But you have to fight for her soul also. Yes, yes. yes. And I was a witness to that. Yes. And the last thing I heard is said that Jesus yes. is standing here yes. with me. Yes. Isn't that a good testimony? Yes. 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 He's standing here with me. And all I said, do not be afraid. And I told him, as a certified chaplain also, I said, please let the room be quiet. Because she's going to slip away. Yeah. And when she slip away, she's going to transit yeah. from the empty realm into the glorified realm. Yeah. 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 Listen, a new celestial body. She's yeah. now living in the celestial city. Yeah. Yeah. So, come the family and to all of the extended family, make no mistake. Pastor Philip Bevel had said it very well. And when I have a chance to say something, I try to make sense. Death is very misty. Yes, yes. It's muddy. You can't see it. Uh -huh. It creeps upon you. But guess what? Death cannot do nothing without time. Amen. They work like a Siamese twin. Yes, yes. But when time says, death, let's go, mm -hmm. we got to move. Yes. She was faithful. Yes. It's in the program. Yes. For three plus years, that woman of God and her sister, Christine, they were locked together That's right. like Siamese twins. Yes. Can I submit this to you all? Yes. Yes. She yes. had never missed a Bible study or uh, a born and glory service never amen, amen. of the teachings mm -hmm. of the word of God and the word of truth. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So to the Thompson family today, you can weep and the Kalma oh, family, you can weep yeah. and hope. Yeah. 
The apostle Paul said, absent from this body, present in the people of the Lord. Yes. Amen. And you know what I like about it? As I listen to the various words crying, John said in Revelation chapter 7, said, God will cry one time. Yes. And God will wipe, wipe away. Away the tears. Yes, from my eyes. From my eyes. Yes. Isn't that wonderful that Amen. we will not need no more undertakers? Amen. We will not need, need no more grave diggers. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. But I sympathize with the karma. And I only have come here today just to build you up, lift you up, mm -hmm. and make a peace of the triune God yes. rest upon each and every one of you yes. until our appointed time come. May the God of peace sanctify your whole spirit, soul, and body blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Be blessed Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
watcher. Right. You met her on the job right. and you left her on the job. Yeah. Many times I will tell her that it's getting late, time for us to leave. And all she will say is, I'm okay, just have one more thing to do. Miss mm -hmm. Berlin did not shy away from tasks that were not a part of her duties. But when asked to do, will simply reply, that's no problem, Mrs. Green. And then I'll go, you sure? And then you know what came next, <laughs> that quiet smile. <laughs> Family, friends, I can go on with many antidotes and incidents in my nine years working with Miss Berlin. But I can tell you, she was a giving human being, an excellent, excellent worker. She had excellent work ethics. She loved the children at Emily Cooper and gave stellar service to the Ministry of Education. She is a woman worthy of praise in life and in death. I want you to Family members, I want you to remember this short quote. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasury. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you should see that in truth, you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Mourn for her, but know that she ran Horse and won the battle. May she rest in eternal peace. Amen. Amen. A pleasant good afternoon. Good afternoon. Family, let me say to you that Miss Calmer would say. I am proud of what took place today. Miss mm -hmm. Cole was that kind of person. When we had a special assembly or anything special, she would always come to me and she would always say, Miss Thompson, it was well done. Mm -hmm. And family, I want to say that I am grateful for this opportunity to speak on behalf of Miss Cole. Ms. Colby and I shared three wonderful years together. And I am so happy that in 2020, in 2020, when I went to Emma Cooper, she, along with Ms. Sands and Mrs. Davis, they embraced me, along with the other staff, but they were the first persons I came into contact with. Ms. Colby and I, we shared many memories, and I'm gonna hold on to them. You know, there were lunch times when she and I would sit under the lunch pavilion and we would just talk and we would reminisce. And you know, it was in October of last year. She and I were walking along the corridor and we were very close. And she said to me, she said, Ms. Thompson, I am tired and I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. You know, and she even expressed like retiring early. And um, you know, I, I spoke, you know, we, we spoke. And of course, you know, I said to her, you know, we would hate to lose you, you know, because of the excellence that she put forth and her job was her life. Amen. She wanted to be the first at Emma Cooper mm -hmm. and she wanted to be the last to leave. That's right. In the afternoons, in the afternoons when I'm leaving, when I was leaving, she was always kindergarten was her last stop. And she I don't know what she was doing in there in the afternoons, but she was in there for more than an hour just making sure, you know, that everything was well done. That was her. And I would say to her, I'll holler for her, Miss Kalma, you know, have a good evening. And her words to me would be, all right, Miss Thompson, drive safely. Mm -hmm. 
And I can say to you, family, that Miss Kalma was a woman of prayer. Amen. She was a woman of God. Yes. Our talks were about God. Yes, she she was was that person when she took sick and we would talk on the phone. You know what she would say to me? She said, Miss Thompson, pray for me. Please pray for me. So she was a woman who believed in prayer. Yes. yes. And it was on the 17th of August when we came back, it was Mrs. Davis, Miss, Miss Rochelle Sands, and myself. We met in the grade five classroom. And I sent Miss Koma a voice message. I always sent her voice messages to comfort her, to encourage her, and to let her know that we were praying for her. Yes. And my message went somewhat like this. Good morning, Miss Koma. I trust that all is well. School is opening, and you are noticeably absent. You know, and she didn't respond to the message, and I called. She didn't answer the call, but minutes later, she called me, and I was so happy that we were able to talk because her voice, her voice was very strong. Yeah. You know, and when I got the message that she was, you know, very low, um, of course I prayed to God early that morning, and I, I asked God, you know, if it is His will, you know, to restore her. But God does not make any mistakes, family. Right. So I'm going to urge you today to hold on to those precious memories. See, Miss Kalma, the, what we did for Miss Kalma while she was alive, that's what counted. That's right. And I know that if she were able to be here, like I said, she would be happy. And to the, the brothers, the sisters, the nieces, the grand nieces, nephews, all of the family, let me say to you that she often spoke about you. You were her pride, you were her joy. Yes. And if, if you didn't know any better, you would think that the Hannah girls and CL, you would think that they were her grandchildren. Mm -hmm. She held them very close and very yes. dear to yes. her. Yes, yes. And I want to say, family, yes, we are sad. We at Emily Cooper Primary School, we really miss Miss Calma. We miss her. She's missed, but we're gonna hold on to the fond memories that we created. Seeing her at the Junior Junkanoo in this, this year, seeing her, she was under the right. tent, yes. and she made sure her heart out my name to, for me to know that she was there supporting her Emily Cooper family. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's she right. was there, and she was, she was always willing, and she was always a part of us. And so family, on behalf of the Department of Education, the Minister of Education, Mrs. The Honorable Glennis Anna Martin, the Director, Mrs. Russell, our District Superintendent, Mr. Kalma and his family, our Education Officers, our District Education Officer, Mrs. Knowles, we worked close together with Ms. Kalma, and to all of the workers at the Department of Education in Savannah Sound, mm -hmm. to all of us at the Emmy Cooper Primary School, every boy, every girl, every worker, we want to say that we thank you for her 26 dedicated years of service. I mean, dedicated. The words from John the Revelator, the 14th chapter of Revelation, and the 13th verse. And it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Yeah. From henceforth, Yea, said the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Amen. And so to the young people of Ms. Kalma's family, I say to you, 
the legacy that she left behind, the dedication that she showed on her job, please follow that. Yeah. Let her be your example. And I say to you, I can rest assured that by the grace of God, I want, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I want to be able to be reunited with Ms. Kalma. Because I know Ms. Kalma died in Christ. Yeah. She died knowing her Savior. Yeah. She was ready to yes. die. Yes. yes, we will miss her greatly. But I say to you, family, be comforted. Be comforted, hold on to the memories, and do live your life so that one day in the new earth, all of us will be able to be joined once again with our dear sister. And I say, may God comfort us and may God keep us. Amen. Speaking of even her temporal life, her family life, and even her spiritual life, the assurance to know indeed who she was. But again, above all, for that which is to come in this next song, blessed assurance, she can say, Jesus is mine. Not Jesus, if Jesus is mine. Not Jesus may be mine. But the assurance, not the insurance now. Not something you lean on after things come to a crisis. But the assurance to know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Jesus is mine. What assurance we have? We must testimony. Congregation stand.
have a selection by Kamari Curtis, Malika Williams, and Erica Komakari. Give us a look at um, nieces and friends. Yes.
Lord, you're faithful. Lord, you're faithful. God, you're faithful. God, you are faithful. Even sometimes when I'm not faithful, God, you're faithful. Your goodness is just running out. I feel the pain sometimes, but your goodness is still running out for me. I feel the back sometimes, but your goodness is still running out for me. I'm going to the songs sometimes, but your goodness is still running out for me. Oh, praise be the name of Jesus. Oh, we are sovereign here today. But I'm here to tell you that joy is coming in the morning. Why? Because he's a faithful God. Sometimes I'm not faithful, but he is still faithful. Oh, sometimes I feel the pain, but he's still faithful. Oh, sometimes I don't know why my loved one is gone and slipped away, but God is still faithful. Somebody say, God is good. God is good. We just praise the name of God. I just feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Don't you know that God is a God? He makes no mistake. He makes no mistake. Sometimes I can't understand the way he works, but he's working. I say God is working. Sure you believe that. Every person in this room has been touched or affected by the loss of someone slipping away in your family. May have been your mother, may have been your father, may have been your cousin, may have been your friend, I don't care who it is, but you've been affected by someone that has slipped away in your life. But today we are here to celebrate the memories of a good life. And as I just sat back and I heard the wonderful things that was said about the life of Berlin, praise be the name of the Lord. I can say that there is one thing that resonated in my ears. One thing that resonated in my heart to hear the words that she was faithful. Oh, God has been so faithful unto us. How much more should we be faithful unto him? You say, I cannot preach Verlene's funeral. I can't do that. She had to preach that while she was alive. You can take your pen and a piece of paper and you can write the most eloquent service, line by line, use the most eloquent words to pretty up yourself. But it means absolutely nothing if your life does not line up with the words of the church. That's why you've got to preach your sermon while you are alive. Really preach her sermon. She was faithful. She was caring. She was compassionate. She had work ethics. Oh, that's what you call preaching. What about you today? Are you preaching your sermon? You got to do it every day of your lives. Yes, 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 what are you preaching? Are you showing love and compassion to your neighbors? That's preaching. Are you helping the ones that are in need? That's preaching. Are you lending and listening to those that need to hear it? That's preaching. Are you sharing the word of God that someone that needs salvation? That's preaching. I challenge you today. 
Say may the life in which I live preach for me. May it preach for me. May it preach for me that my life can be so wonderfully in the sight of God. I don't even have to say one word. That the life in which I live, it would preach for me. What about you? We got to do some soul searching today. Yes, yes, yes. You see, Sister Merlene can't hear me. No. No, 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 no. Her body is here. Yes. But her work is done. Yes. You see, her sermons here on earth is all done. Yes. Her preaching here on earth is all done. Yes. But we've got to work to do. Yes, yes, yes. We got to preach. Yes. We got to preach to somebody. Yes, yes. We got to show somebody the love of Christ. Yes. We got to show somebody the way that's preaching. Your life would be worth living Amen. if your life is a sermon Amen. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let's go back into some history. I want to give you some history in the Bible. I go all the way, all the way back to the book of all the way back to the book of Genesis. A man there by the name of Adam. Do you know him? Word of God says that Adam came on the scene. He lived 930 years. Say wow. Yeah, wow. That's what you call living it. But as I continue to read the script of Adam, it says, and he died. I go down a little bit further and I see the life of Noah. A wonderful worker for God. Lived some 950 years. But then the continual script says that he died. I go a little bit further and I see one by the name of Methuselah. Word of God says that he lived 969 years. What? Yes, sir, yes, sir. But my goodness, it still came a time in Methuselah's life that the script had to be written that he died. Go a little bit further, and I say Abraham, 175 years, and he died. I see David, 70 years, and he died. Sister Verdon, 63 years, and she died. Do you get me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you know where I'm coming from? Yes, sir. When I look at my life, if the Lord delays his coming on my life, the script too will be written that he died. The script will be written of your life that you died. We will all die if the Lord delays his coming. There is a point in Hebrews tells me. Unto man, what's the die? I say, what's the die? And after which, what's going to happen? The judgment. The gravity of life. Yes, We're only here but for a short time. That's right. But you gotta make up your mind. That's right. You better set it right. Yeah. You better be determined. Yeah. You all will have to pass That's right. through the scene of death. Yeah, I don't care how much you try to put it in the back of your mind. That's right. I don't care how much you try to ignore it. Yeah. I don't care how much you try to dismiss it. But there is coming a time that you're gonna have to die. Yeah. The rich will die. The poor will die. The fat will die. The skinny will die. The white will die. The blue will die. You're all. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Good Amen. 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 But when I think and I read the Holy Scriptures, it tells me something else about death. Well, God tells me that God says, Precious, according to Psalms 119, Precious in the sight. Of God is the death. Hmm. Death is precious. Death is precious. Man, let me tell you. In the human aspect of it, I can look at the pain and I can say, my Lord, the pain is not precious. In the human aspect, when I think about the horse, it's not precious. Or right, some of you family members, when you go into that room and Merlene is no longer there, how can I say it's precious? The memories, oh my goodness, it causes tears to come to my eyes. How can I say it's precious? Mm. But look at this. It did not say in your sight. It did not say in my sight. But it says in God's sight. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Oh, in other words, you better be ready. And if you're ready, your death is precious. But he also tells me, when I think about the wicked, 
Oh, he has something else to say about the wicked you know. He says that he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Search your hearts today. Search your hearts today. Are you precious in his sight because you are a child of God? Or are you living a life that is wicked, far away from the covenant of God, far away from his promises? He will have no pleasure in your death. Mm, precious. I can see for the eyes of God. It is precious. I'll tell you why. Because it has allowed every one of us from different walks of life to come together right here today in the sight of God. That's precious. He has allowed us to come into this sanctuary to see and to witness that we still serve a faithful God. We still serve a loving God. A God whose goodness is still pursuing after us and in God's sight that is precious. He has allowed you today to be a witness to the testimony of reality that you're all going to pass away. And in God's sight that's precious. You know why? Gives each and every one of us an opportunity to do something before it is too late. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, it is precious in the sight of God oh, because it takes us and it reminds us about eternity. Oh, where will you be in eternity? But today we can have the assurance and we can have confidence in the words of the Apostle Paul. As the Apostle Paul says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. And the very first three words he says, for I know. Yeah. Turn to someone and say, I know. I know. Come on, it is good to know that you know. Yes. For I know. If you are a child of God, you can have an assurance of knowing this is not the end of the chapter. No, no, no. Death is not the end no, no. of the script that is written on my life. Yes. Oh, yes. It is not the end of the script that is written on the life of Sister Verlene. Uh -uh. Oh, the book just turns over to a, another chapter. Yes. And that's why we as children of God, as believers of God, we can say, as the Apostle Paul says here, for we know, for we know, for we know, and it's good to know that you know that you know. Turn to some and say, I know. What do I know? What do I know? Oh, the Apostle Paul says, I know that if this earthly church is the soul and what? God. I know. In other words, he knows that we're going to have a resting place like this one day. He knows that this is going to be our picture one day. But the Apostle Paul doesn't conclude there. He says, if this earthly tabernacle, if this earthly tent is this soul and corn, really is this soul from us. She is gone. But I want to tell you something. Turn to someone and say, there's still hope. There's still hope. Death is not the end. I say, death is not the end of the script of my life. Oh, praise be the name of God. You see, Apostle Paul gives us an example. He likens our bodies unto buildings. Turn to someone and say, I'm a building. I'm a building. The building that he likens us to here in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1 is what? A tent. You know anything about tents? You see, you take the tents and what do you do with them? You build them. You may put them in your backyard. You may put them on the park. You may put them on the beach. But then eventually when you put them up, you got to do what? Take them down. In other words, he is telling me this ain't no permanent dwelling. That's right. That in which you are carried about your body, it is only a tent. It is not your permanent dwelling. Oh, this is only her tent, not her permanent dwelling. You can take this tent and you can pretty it up. You can take this tent and you can paint it up. You can take this tent and you can dress it up. But be reminded. It is only your temporary dwelling. Yes, yes, oh, yes, but praise be the name of God that I got another place. Yeah. Even though this tent 
which is my temporary dwelling. I've got another building. Oh, praise the name of Israel. Sometimes with these tents of ours, you may put them up and you may forget them. You know what happens when you forget them? Oh, the wind may come and do what? Blow them down. The elements of nature, the sun, and the salt may get to it and begin to work it out. It begin to deteriorate. Yep. That's a reality, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Our bodies, they gotta take some whipping sometimes. Yes. Our bodies, they take abuse sometimes. Yes. Yes. They take the whippings from the elements sometimes. Yes. Yes. Such it is in these tents in which we have, but the apostle Paul continues to go on to say, he says, well, if this tabernacle or this tent is dissolved and gone, we've got to do it. He places us on something that has a foundation. He places us on something that is sturdy. No longer a tent. But I've got a building. I say I've got a building. I'm not talking about these earthly buildings. But I'm talking about a building that is made by the hand of God himself. I've got a building. What about you? Can you have that assurance today that you've got that building? Or if you're a child of God, you've got that building. Tell somebody, don't look at this. Only a friend. Only a temperate. But if you see what I really got. If you know what I really got. That is when you know what you know that you know. I know. I've got a permanent home. Not made with hands. <laughs> Not with these hands. You're going to have some good masons. Yeah. Could build some pretty things. Yeah. But eventually they come. Yeah. Block sets. Set many blocks. Eventually they deteriorate. Yeah. But the building in which I am talking about. Amen. Not made with these earthly hands. But they are made by the hand of the Lord himself. Yeah. 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 I must be special. Berlin must be special. Oh, yes. You must be special. Yes. Because God is doing a work in your life. Yes. He is prepared for you a sturdy foundation. Yes. A sturdy building. A solid building made by his own hands. Yes. Yes. And where is that? Eternal? Yes. What was that word? Eternal. What was that word? Eternal. You mean I ain't got to worry about it dying no more? Oh. You mean I ain't got to worry about listening to the doctors no more? Oh. I ain't got to worry about bank accounts getting low. I got to go to the bank. Yes. I ain't got to worry about that no more. Yes. Yes. Because this building yes. is eternal yes. in yes. Yes. I want you to see something else. When I continue to go down to the writings of the Apostle Paul, he begins to elaborate a little bit more on this text. And look what he says. When I go down to verse... It says in verse 4, in this tent, this tabernacle in which we are dwelling, it says we do groan. Yes. Yes. And my goodness, yes. when I saw the family coming through those doors this morning, yes. I can see the pain ripping through their hearts. Yes. Just imagining the agony and the pain and the sorrow that you are bearing on the inside of this tent. And you got to groan. When you feel the afflictions of this life, you've got to groan. When you feel the pressure on this life, you've got to groan. The afflictions, the setback, the torture on this life, you've got to groan. You will groan in this tent. The Apostle Paul tells us because we are grooming in this tent of ours, yes. we are showing the affections of the mortal body in which we possess. Yeah. Look at your neighbor. That's a beautiful body they have. Yeah. No less than many today. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, the body is only mortal. Yeah. Yes. And when I say mortal, it means that it is subject to death. In fact, 
from the very moment that you were born into this earth, you begin to die. That's why I can tell you with full assurance, it is appointed unto man once to We are dying every day, this mortal body in which we are. But the apostle says, in the last part of verse 4, it says this mortality, yeah. this body of mind that is dying, it swallows up life. Yeah. It says mortality is swallowed up by life. Yes. But think about this. Some serious stuff here. Yes. In the physical realm, it doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. Mortality, it said, that mortality might be swallowed up by what? Life! But physically, our life is swallowed up by mortality. That's physical. Why? The pain, it's killing me. The sorrow, it's killing me. The things I'm going through, it's killing me. The torture, it's killing me. The agony, it's killing me. How I'm gonna get out there and face another day, it's killing me. The doctor report, it's killing me. The debate report, it's killing me. You see what's happening? Our mortal life is being swallowed up. We are allowing the things of this world to kill us slowly. Hmm. But the Apostle Paul has a word for us today. Do not let mortality, do not let the life in which you live, do not let your life be swallowed up by mortality, do not let your life be swallowed by sorrow, do not let your life be swallowed by afflictions, do not let your life be swallowed by the things of this world, the addictions of this world. Don't let your life be swallowed up by those things. The word of God says, Ah, oh, this mortal shall put on. I say this mortal shall put on. Oh, you got that? In other words, let mortality be swallowed up by life. Let mortality be swallowed by immortality. I'm here to tell you today that death it is not the end for the born again believers, for those who know the Lord, it is not the end. It is only merely a tent of ours being exchanged into a permanent building. Yes. I say death is not the end. Oh, it is only the part that kills the thing that hinders us. Yes. And you know what's hindering you? This flesh of ours. Yes, Subject to sin. The Apostle Paul said, the things in which I should do, I go do them. Because there's a warring going on in this mortality of mine. Mm. But Ted is not the end. Ted is not the end for the believers because it is able to rise you from darkness into light. It is able to rise you from death into life. That's why I can say that death is not the end. Death is not the end. Because it is able to take my faith. And it's able to exchange it with sight. Turn to somebody and say, I shall see. Do you believe today? Do you believe that you're going to see? Do you believe you can only have that assurance of knowing that you shall see? If you are saved by his sovereign grace, I shall see him. That's why I can declare that death is not the end. It is only an exchange place for me. It is only that which transitions me into a better life. Into a better hope. Into a better building. That in which the Lord has prepared for me. And he has prepared it for all of you that love his appearance. Do you love him today? Do you trust him today? Are you relying on him today? Oh, be assured of knowing that this mortal shall put on immortality. I want to give you a little bit more clarity on that. When I think about immortality, I am thinking about eternal life. How can this mortal body of mine put on immortality? How 
how can this tent of mine become that permanent dwelling and have life everlasting? It's because I've got to take on something. I said, I've got to take on something. And I ain't talking about taking on your burdens. Uh-uh, you take them to the Lord. And you leave them there. I ain't talking about taking on your bills. I ain't talking about taking on your pain or your sorrow. It's not going to do. I've got to take on something that is more eternal. In order for this mortal body of mine to have immortality, I've got to take on life. And the master of life itself is who? Jesus! Shout Jesus! Shout Jesus! He says, I am come that you may have life. And what kind of life? I said, what kind of life? More abundantly. Right, chapter 14 tells me something. I'm talking about the giver of life. I'm talking about life itself. He says, I go to do what? Compare a place. <laughs> Hallelujah, I got a place. I go to prepare a place for you. Now look at this. You see this temporary tent. That's not the place. The temporary tent exchanged to a permanent building. A permanent dwelling, a solid structure, a sturdy, a sturdy structure. That's me. That's me. But our Lord Jesus Christ takes it one step further. I want to take that sturdy structure that I have given unto you. No longer that tent. That will go back to the dust. Oh, but that sturdy structure that I have given unto you, I want to take that and I want to put that into my permanent building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I call it heaven. Do you know that place today? Uh, in my father's house, many mentions. I'm gonna take that tent. Uh, he's gonna turn it into a permanent building, a permanent dwelling. Take that permanent dwelling and put it into his eternal dwelling. The place called heaven. And that place called heaven, no more sickness. Turn to someone and say, no more. No more pain. No more sorrow. Oh, Sister Verlene, no more taking those children and carrying them across the street. No more men touring them here on this earth. No more of that good macaroni baking. No more of that stuff. But eternal in the heavens. But today, you got to be prepared. Are you prepared today? We are going through a moment of darkness right now. But know today. There's a glorious light. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, Jesus. Sun one day looked into the skies and he was amazed by those stars in which he see. When he looked at those stars, he had a whole lot of questions. Where they come from? How far are they from the earth? What gives them light? Whoa, so many questions. He had concerning the stars. But his father looked at them. Look at him. And says, you know what, son? When you look at those stars, you got to see them when right in the night. In the night. In the night. For you today, we are going through darkness. I say you're going through the night. The storms of this life. It is the night in your life. It is the darkness that is in your life. But the Father says unto the Son, you've got to take your eyes off the darkness and then you've got to look to those heavenly lights. Yes. And that's when you are able to appreciate the beauty of the stars. Yes. I'm telling you today, take your eyes off the darkness. Uh -huh. yes. The darkness of death. The darkness of the cares of this world. And I'm telling you today, look to that eternal light. Yes. Oh, it's a glorious light. It's a light that will give you that blessed hope and we've heard it already today. There is a hope for the people of God. Oh, you are not hopeless when you're a born again believer. Oh, our hope is in Him. The light. Do you know Him today? Do you know Him today? Search your heart. And I want you to have these words ringing in your ears as you leave these halls. Death is not the end of the chapter on my life. It only opens a book to a brand new day. How about you? Begin today. Begin a freshman Christ. Write the script on your life. That when you get into the portals of heaven, into your brand new permanent dwelling, 
Hard to hear the words from my Jesus. Yeah. To hear the words from my Lord. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thou good and faithful servants. Yes. Enter now into the choice of your Lord. Praise be his name. Amen. Until you find Jesus as your very own. Don't know if the next funeral will be yours. But if it is, if it is, you can have the assurance. I know that I know that I know. If this earthly chamber of mine is this art, I've got a better place. I've got a better place. Made by the hand of my Lord. Eternal in the heavens. Shall we pray? Father God of mercy, God of all comfort, how grateful we are, oh God, that we have you that is loving, that is kind, that is caring, and that is compassion that we can turn to in moments like these. And now, oh most holy Lord, look down upon this family and all that gather here today, in the name of Jesus, look down on us with love and compassion, oh God. Grant unto us that eternal comfort that you and you alone can give. Remind us, O Lord, that these days in which we live in, they are days that are passing swiftly by. Only we are like a vapor that appear for a moment and then pass away. So teach us, O God, to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. May your peace that passes all understanding rest with us, comfort us, Remain with us and abide with us. Now henceforth and forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We have indeed 
come to the close of this celebration. The, her testimony, she's on Outward Road. Her testimony, she's been faithful unto the very end. Then even the gospel that was presented concerning life eternal. What about your life? What about your continuation? Even while joined together, sing this last song. There's a line that is drawn through the ages. On that line still stands the old rugged cross. On that cross the battle's raging for the gain of a man's soul or the loss. It is finished. Yeah. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more wars. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. Jesus is Lord to the family. May you feel God's presence beneath you to lift you up when you fall. May you feel God's presence around you to protect you in all things. And above all, may you feel God's presence above you to guide you and lead you on. It is finished.